Hey everyone, this is Prince Watercrest, and welcome to a brand new Let's Play. This time around, it is the Super Nintendo Entertainment version of Where in the World is Carmen Sandiego. Yeah, I'm throwing a real curveball of a return to Let's Playing with this, believe it or not. I and a lot of kids from my generation grew up with the Carmen Sandiego games. And the one that we probably know of best is the IBM compatible PC version. Which also came in a Apple Macintosh variety. And if there is a way to learn about geography, I'm going to tell you right now, this is a far better way to do it than Mario is missing. I know a few of the PC games ended up on consoles. I know this ended up on... Super Nintendo and Genesis, and I may think it may have been on NES. I know for a fact that Time got on the NES, as well as Genesis and Super Nintendo. I may play that one someday. Who knows? But this is definitely a game that I've enjoyed throughout the years. Definitely grew up with this one. I was really good at it, and... Well, it's been a long time since I played it, and I've only recently learned there were console versions. And so I might as well go ahead and just say, hey, let's play a console version for the channel. Why not? So as soon as we press start here, we'll be able to switch from five different languages. We have English, we have French, German, Italian, and Spanish. By the way, the picture of the Agni Detective Agency that we saw before it took us to the credits... It actually cycles between the four seasons, and you get one of them at random. The one we saw, I think, was summer, but there is also a spring, a fall, and a winter one as well. So, that's awfully nice that they brought that from the PC version. Anyway, I might as well go ahead and select English. And as soon as we select our language, we are looking dead at the Acme Com link. We're going to be looking at this thing throughout the entire game. You're not getting around this bad boy. And this is not a very strong computer. This thing has only 64K RAM. Nowadays, you have to have at least 4 gigs to really do something. Anyway, as soon as you start, you get to input your name, just like in the PC version. I'm glad they brought that touch to the consoles. Also, the beeps are random. There's no rhyme or reason to them. They just play a random one whenever you insert a character. And when you're done, you can press start. Space lets you insert a space, and rub lets you erase a letter, in case you need to. And you get to pick your gender. And because we don't have battery backup or a hard drive to save our progress to, unlike the PC, we have to insert a password in case we want to continue on with the game. You get one at the end of every mission, but you can also check it out in the options menu in case you need it as well. If you're new, you're just press start. I'm definitely pressing start, and this is not going to be a one-shot video, guys. We are going all the way to the top. We are going all the way. Let's do this. At the beginning of every mission, you start out at Acme Headquarters, and you get your mission, as noted on the right-hand side of the comlink. National treasure stolen from Budapest. The treasure has been identified as a rare Transylvanian coffin collection. Female suspect reported at the scene of the crime, and of course your assignment is to get that coffin collection back, or whatever it is that has been stolen. And you always start at the scene of the crime, and you have to look for clues to find out where the thief went, as well as who the thief is. You must apprehend the thief by Sunday, 5 p.m. We always start at Monday at 9 in the morning, and we have to end it by Sunday at 5 p.m. 
and we always start at the scene of the crime and we don't waste any time getting over there. We have four buttons in the lower right hand corner. We have the game options menu. We have the plane, which let's just fly to wherever we need to. There's a magnifying glass, which lets us search for clues. And there's a computer, which not only lets us pull out d dossiers on the people that we're going to be capturing and recapturing throughout the game, but we will also be able to use that to fill out the warrant in case we get any clues on what the person we're go looking for looks like. Not really much we can do except press the third button, the magnifying glass, to search for clues. And we have three places to check out. There's a museum, a library, and a marketplace. Let's check out the museum. If you look to the lower left, you'll find out we spent two hours searching the museum. And whenever you do anything, fly to another destination, look for clues, or even compute info for the warrant, it uses time. It doesn't seem like we're using that much time, but those little passings of hours definitely add up. And the missions get longer as you go through the game. A reliable source told me she was writing a paper on volcanoes of the world. Unless you had the almanac or you were just really, really smart, that doesn't really seem to help much. But it is a clue to wherever it is that we're going. I heard she was interested in the history of Danish colonies. Again, you would probably need either really good smarts or the almanac for that. And we have the marketplace. A reliable source told me she asked where she could find Viking artifacts. She arrived in a convertible. So we got volcanoes, Viking artifacts, and a Danish colony. And she drives a convertible. There's the warrant. We just go to the computer, select Warrant, and by pressing A, we can just go through the options. And I'm not going to compute just yet. It will save our settings, believe it or not. We just need to compute the warrant in order to actually get the warrant, but of course that will take time. And you want to get at least three things filled out before you compute. That way you're not spending time that you could use to actually look for clues to narrow down a list of suspects. Usually when you have three things you'll be able to narrow it down the one anyway. So again we got volcanoes, Danish colonies, and Viking artifacts. I know that's going to be somewhere in Scandinavia maybe. Hmm. If you'd given me a flag, I would have been able to check where it was. Hmm. I'm going to go 50 50 here and say Reykjavik. Reykjavik, the capital of Iceland, is a picturesque seaside city where more than a third of the nation's approximately 250,000 residents live. This is, of course, assuming you're in the you're in the 90s. I'm assuming there's a lot more people than that in the city now. And if I look for clues, it'll tell me if I'm there or not, where I'm supposed to be. Ah, we got it! Yes! Good! I would have been heartbroken if, if I uh, picked the wrong place. The person you're looking for was here, and she said she was going to study Taipans. She had red hair. So we are in the right place, and we actually spent eight hours sleeping. Apparently you go to sleep as soon as it's midnight. And just like in the PC version, you don't go to sleep on the plane. You sleep as soon as you land. So it, it could be very late when you start sleeping and you may not wake up until like maybe even like 11 or 12 depending on how stuff goes. 
and you really got to keep the eight hours of sleep every day in mind as you do your time management. So she's looking for Typhons and she has red hair. Well, you might as well go ahead and put the red hair in and compute this bad boy. And we have Lady Agatha Wayland. Let's go ahead and pull her up in the dossiers because we can. Thankfully, that does not waste any time doing so. Name, Lady Agatha Wayland, female, red, hobby is tennis. She is a reader of upper-class English mystery stories, and she drives a Denby Roadster, which I'm pretty sure is a convertible. She has a diamond ring the size of a grapefruit, which I've always remembered from the PC version. And she speeds through the countryside looking for great Mexican restaurants. So now that we know who we're going for, we don't have to fill out the warrant anymore. Now we just need to just catch up with her. So let's go to the airport and see if we can find more clues. Sources tell me she left in a plane with a red, yellow, and black flag on its wing. Definitely helpful, especially if you have a list of flags and what they look like on hand. Again, you would need the almanac for that. I saw the person you're looking for and she was in the market for coconuts. So we got Taipons, coconuts, and a red, white, and black flag, I think. I don't want to look it up again because of how the searching works. The left location always spend, wastes two hours. The middle location uses three and the right always uses four. So what do we got here for travel? Hmm. I want to believe it's Port Moresby. Apparently you sleep for nine hours or something. I don't know. Papua New Guinea became an independent nation in 1975. Its nearest neighbors are Indonesia and Australia. Let's go ahead and search the bank, and if a crook doesn't show up, we're in the wrong place. Once again, I lucked out. Great. Brilliant. Nice. A reliable source told me she changed her money to pounds she had a large ring on. And if we inserted the ring into the warrant, it wouldn't change a thing. We'd still compute a warrant for Lady Agatha, and we would waste hours that we could be using searching for clues or backtracking in case we went somewhere we weren't supposed to. Airport, let's see what's over there. Red, white, and blue flag and wanting to convert to pounds. UK maybe? We'll find out at the palace. That really didn't give me anything new. Uh, thanks game. So now we might as well go to London because that's the only thing I can think of that involves pounds and a red, white, and blue flag. London is the capital of the United Kingdom, which consists of England, Scotland, Wales, and Northern Ireland. Seemed to be in the right place. Let's go to the hotel and make sure. Really liking the guy in the balloon. I don't know why he's kissing to everybody, but... Well, whatever. A reliable source told me she asked about the exchange rate for Cruzados. That's probably going to be in a some country somewhere. I want to say Latin American, but I don't want to jump to conclusions until I get more clues. Green, blue, and yellow flag. Brazil, maybe? Only one I can think of that reminds me of Cruzados. And it says that she was carrying a tennis racket. 
So we just have two clues going on right now. Tell me. Well, Rio de Janeiro is there. That's the closest thing I can think of. So let's go ahead and go over there. Rio de Janeiro is Brazil's second largest city. Good, we're in Brazil. Famous Sugarloaf Peak overlooks its beautiful natural harbor. And let's go to the hotel and see if we can find any clues. Oh no, we got the axe! If you get an axe or a knife hitting hitting the uh, window on the left side of the comlink, you're pretty much where the crook is. You will not get any more clues as to what the suspect looks like. And if you don't have your warrant filled out at this point, you're basically boned. You're not going to complete this mission. Anyway, time to head to the library so we can call the crook there. Oh, good. In case you call the crook, you won't waste any more hours. You just go straight to the capturing. And we got the guy in jail. Or rather, the woman in jail because we have a female suspect in this case. We had gotten Lady Agatha. We had the warrant for her arrest, which means we are able to put her in jail until, well, whenever we have to go after her again. We have saved the rare Transylvanian coffin collection from whatever fate it might have had had we not gotten it back. And it is now returned to Budapest. Good! Interpol thanks you for your work on this case, and because you completed your first mission, you are promoted from Rookie to Sleuth. And you have to complete four more cases until your next promotion. And whenever you complete a mission, you will get a security access code. And it is case sensitive, so you want to make sure you write it down as you see it. And I guess that'll be it for the first video. So join me next time where we go through another globetrotting adventure and go find another suspect and return whatever historical landmark has been stolen. So until then, this is Prince Watercrest. Take care, stay safe, and thanks for watching!